YouTube kick. My name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Yes, me, myself, and I. I was fooled into um, what it seems like was a fake account that was talking about a lot of left wing stuff, right? And it seems like this account got suspended and this whole time has been fake. So even I got pulled into that. So you never know. But let's go ahead and look into this. I think even Candace Owens believed that this account was real because I believe she also retweeted this as well. But let's look right into it. It's, it's hard to know who's real and who's not, man. Let's hop right into it. Hey, by the way, we're going to hop right into it. I don't know why I keep repeating like that. Okay, so this is Erica Marsh. Right? She had a uh, Twitter account and it had said that she, you know, we had all thought that she was real. So let's go ahead and talk about it. In eight months, Erica Marsh has become one of the most consistently viral left-wing voices on Twitter, gaining more than 130,000 followers for her hyper-liberal, often melodramatic opinions about the biggest flashpoints in America's views. We're not going to read this whole thing. We'll read a part, and then I'm going to get to the bottom. She's been especially popular with conservatives who promoted her as a perfect symbol of overly theatrical and insane liberals can be. Like when she attacked the Supreme Court, uh, Court Affirmative Act decision based uh, decision last week saying no black people will ever be able to see in a merit based system. That tweet got viewed over 27 million times and y'all saw that I use it. There's just one problem. She's probably a fake. So let's continue down. Her account carried a blue verified check mark, an icon that once connoted that the person's identity had been confirmed by Twitter. But since Elon's takeover last year has become a mean to only that the account had been paid for the designation. She pro she waved off doubters by repeatedly saying that she was not parody, a fake person or a robot, but tweeted once that she wished she were because it would make navigating Twitter a lot easier. She declined to share details about herself by saying she had a terrifying stalker from social media, adding, I've learned from my mistakes in the past and choose not to share much about my personal life. Last week, as people questioned her legitimacy, she asked her Twitter followers to recommend a defamation attorney to her. When it came to a political commentary, she seemed to regard every polarizing news story as an opportunity to offer her opinion to solicit fans to promote her through their own networks. She started her account in September of 2022, shortly before Musk's takeover, with a rapid-fire series of left-leaning tweets and requests for people to re retweet if they agreed. It worked in November and December. She was gaining more than 1,000 followers a day, according to the audience, data from social media analytics. <laughs> analytics? Am I not saying that right? Why does it sound weird to me? Analytics, sorry. Analytics firm Social Blade. So either the photo, this is the photo she has right now. And I do want to say this. It is beautiful that she happens to be this blonde, attractive woman with these beautiful eyes. So it seems to push right into the narrative. And people, of course, want to follow somebody who's this good looking, right? It's unclear where the account's photos came from, but Scott Rollinson suspects that these photos may be stock images, selfies taken from a woman not connected to the account, or images that were otherwise altered, perhaps to combine multiple photos into one. Each had a different background, though the facial features remain largely the same. That's what I think. I don't think this is an actual person, if it is manipulated. They took features from certain women and put it all into one picture. Because even this picture on the left looks way different from this picture on the right, to me. It just looks like they really mixed it up. Maybe they may have just changed the eyes, changed the hair. I would like somebody who's really good at Photoshop to really take a look, good look into that. Some of her tweets were copied word for word from other big left-wing accounts or trending tweets, while others sometimes read like liberal uh, caricatures last month. She said she still wears two masks whenever I go out and support Ukraine. On Twitter, she became a subject of a heavy doubt and fascination, with some theorizing that she has a right-wing agitator or a foreign actor or that she was uh, designed to collect as much data about the Democratic voters as possible for God knows what. Amateurs, uh, amateur online sleuths noted that her name matched a character on the TV show One Tree Hill. It said they found one of her profile photos on a German marketing website. The last part cannot be confirmed. The assertion she was a phony, however, became just another way to build an audience. A, ma a MAGA just told me that my proud Democrat followers are bots. She tweeted last year. 
let's prove him wrong where my allies at. Okay, so pretty much, and then, um, hold on, let me read this one last part. Uh, a former Twitter trust and safety employee who investigated and accounts for an impersonation or authentication who left the company earlier this year after must take over spoke on the condition of anonymity due to fear of harassment said that the company had seen a rush of accounts out of North Macedonia around October 22nd, posing as pro-Trump influencers and offering the same style of over-the-top clickbait tweets. Troll farms from the Republic and Eastern Europe have, in recent years, run sensationalist websites and taken over Facebook pages in hopes of pulling in ad money from angry uh, readers in the U.S., regardless of their political leanings. It is unclear whether March's account was a part of this kind of campaign, the former Twitter employee said, but it shares many of the characteristics of the networks of fake political account created during the run-up to the 22, uh, 2022 midterms. These accounts were often run from foreign countries in opinion on diversive current events while posing as political active Americans. They tended to use profile pictures taken from around the internet to create a persona that seemed relatable or engaging. Young women, teachers, and veterans. And they use exaggerated political stances to stir up controversial draw readers and build up an audience, either to score political points or monetize the account, maybe by changing its name and content in the months to come. It says that Erica March's account included a link to a Venmo account that would allow readers to send her money. Venmo did not respond. You can go a long way with a reasonably consistent one-dimensional identity online if it is certain features, smart strategies for posting content and attractive profile picture, a degree in spice of sassiness, Scott Rollinson said. Our account discourse is deeply vulnerable to this kind of character. So, whew, that was a lot of reading. Um, yeah, I totally fell for that, and obviously all of us did. A lot of us did. Um, it's very interesting now that I really think about it, because, you know, and I want to kind of push this towards YouTube. When there's some people who say, I can get you 2 million, maybe not 2 million. They say, man, I can get you to 1,000 uh, subscribers easy. I can get you to 10,000. I can make you go viral. Because there is, as much as we hate to say it, there is a way to build subscribers without ever showing your face and just pushing hot topics, right? Not having a true opinion. That's why... I like accounts kind of like mine where we have to show our face. You know, we're commentators, we're pundits who show our face. So, you know, it's authentically coming from us, but there are accounts on YouTube that are completely not necessarily bots, but they're completely just some random person who just push, pushing political things or pushing um, certain things. There, there was a famous uh, YouTube and I don't want to say the channel because I'm not exactly sure, but it had hundreds hundreds i think 346,000 subscribers or something like that if not a million i can't remember exactly where but it came up that this account was not ran by an individual a lot of people loved it because they thought it was a person talking one but it came to be found out that this was ran by an entire company it was a company that would just pick hot topics put on an ai generated generated voice and make videos and that's how and they were able to get subscribers like crazy because they were a company so they could rapid fire videos out and get information put together so quickly that people real people can keep up can't keep up with for somebody to make a video on one person and come up with information over like 10 years for this one individual it takes maybe two or three weeks to research that stuff some people they take days some people take weeks to research and then put a whole video together it takes a while to do that because you want to get all your facts straight and then you have to write out a script and then you have to edit the video. But if you got a whole company, you got somebody who edits the video, you got somebody who does the voice, you got somebody who does the research and put that together, you can start doing that in a matter of days. Because as soon as you put out, because all you have to do is honestly, you can just make videos ahead of time, right? Now, some things you're going to be have to be right on top of, but some subjects you don't have to make a video. You can make a video about this individual YouTuber Make it weeks in advance, right? Go ahead and have it private, like have it as a YouTube video, but you can't see it. And then just keep making videos after that. And that way, as soon as you start making those videos and start private and start making them public, you can just make them public one after another. And then eventually, it looks like you're putting out videos every single day. Even though you make these videos weeks in advance, now that you've got, you've already got the ball rolling, you, you're already weeks ahead in your schedule. Does that make sense? I'm sorry if that doesn't make sense. My whole point is that it's, it's just crazy to think that there are accounts out here that are really trying to push political stuff for us 
like this this account probably was just trying to make money um but also it could show how diverse and how this um divisive it can be it could just be somebody who's just trying to get us to go to war with each other by putting something about black people and we all fell for it because we thought that somebody was saying the the um saying the thing that out loud now that i really look back on that tweet that's why it gained so much thing because it's like there's just no way somebody would say something like that and now we can see that you're probably right nobody would say something like that so what i'm going to try to do from now on is unless i can see the person or the person makes a video of their face at some point i'm gonna try to avoid going after just particular tweets i'm just gonna go after videos of people so if somebody says something crazy, something I disagree with and I think is wild, I'm going to try to find a video of them talking and saying something similar. That way I can have some kind of uh, um, verification of who they are or be like, OK, this is really that person talking on this. Um, and that'll be much easier. I know there's AI and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's AI can be very believable. But there are certain mannerisms that when you, if you watch a lot of commentary videos like I do, there's just something you can't fake. I've seen a lot of AI stuff and there's always something just a little off when they talk. Right. And I'm sure it will get so advanced that it will be hard to tell. But at the same time, the more you start seeing people go to interviews, they're live and stuff like that. You'll be like, OK, this person seems real. And even if it was, let's say it's completely AI generated in this, like my video right here, it looks as real as possible, even though y'all can see the lighting and everything changing on me. That's also important. When you're watching videos, check for lighting, check for movements. You can see my mic moving, my hands, and you just see everything around me. My environment is being manipulated. When I touch my table, you can see my camera shake. Just, just look for stuff like that in case it ever gets down to that. But nonetheless, there's always going to be somebody who's trying to divide us up and trying to do these kind of things. And it worked. It totally worked. And I feel foolish for even making that video. Um, my purpose was still the same, but I hate that I used somebody who is possibly fake to um, promote my video like I did. Um, and uh, I'm going to do a better job about making sure I look into everybody. But you guys do the same. If you see somebody who is completely extreme and insane, try to find video of them. Try to find something that proves that they're a real person. From now on, I'm just going to assume some people are bots before I even start looking into them. I'll say this one last thing. I fell for another account that says something crazy who was pretending to be somebody else. And I didn't even look into it. I reposted and retweeted a post and I have to go back and delete it because it was somebody who wasn't even that person saying it. You know, look at the follower count. Look and see if you have videos of them actually talking about this kind of stuff and do your due diligence like I didn't do. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what y'all think about Erica Marsh and people who make these fake accounts and make all these money and are really just a company or a fake person behind these accounts. All right, peace.